at 11. Action News Jax starts with breaking news. And Jacksonville Sheriff says one of his officers was shot across the face by a burglary suspect who was then shot and killed by JSO officers tonight. The investigation shut down a neighborhood for hours. Now, the sheriff says that officer is at the hospital but should be able to go home tonight. I'm Tanika Hughes. And I'm Ben Becker in for John Bachman. Now, the shooting happened in northwest Jacksonville. Neighbors in that area of Hardy Street and West 3rd Street were told to stay in their homes while police were investigating. Tonight, we have live team coverage. Action News Jack's Nick Gibson is talking to witnesses, but we start with Action News Jack's Ben Ryan with the latest information from JSL. And Ben Sheriff T.K. Waters said that an officer was grazed on the left side of his face in the shooting after a suspect shot at him. Now, the sheriff did say five officers did fire back at that suspect, killing him, and he died at the scene there. You take a look behind me. All this started in the uh, northwest uh, neighborhood of uh, uh, Jacksonville here. They were investigating a burglary at a home in this area, and the sheriff said that they found the suspect in the suspect vehicle over on Hardy Street, which isn't too far from where we are right now is just around the street so we're currently on third street we're near woods as well but hardy's not too far from here and this is a little bit of scene from earlier you could see the intense police presence there was swat here as well it looked like a command center uh, that shut down several streets in this area now, again, uh, the sheriff said when they found the car, the suspect's car, about two blocks away, the sheriff said that there was a gun on top of that suspect's car, and he said that when they walked up to it, they asked several times for the suspect to come out of the car and to show his hand several times, which the sheriff said he refused. He said it was at least seven or eight times. Sheriff Waters said that's when uh, the suspect shot for whatever reason that was, and again, grazing the officer on the left side of his face who is expected to be released from the hospital tonight. So when we, the sheriff was speaking, here's what he had to say when he found out what happened. I was telling him I was going to have dinner. And when I got the phone call, I just I lost my appetite. Um, got dressed and came out immediately, went to the hospital to see him. And, um, you know, you just get that sick feeling because you don't want to lose an officer in the line of duty. That's That was my, my concern. And again, all this shut down a, uh, several streets and neighborhoods um, in northwest Jacksonville for several hours. There actually still is police in this area. And again, as far as that shelter in place, which we mentioned was up for a couple of hours, Sheriff Waters said that at the time they just weren't sure if anyone else was involved and they wanted to keep the public safe. The sheriff did say that all officers are on administrative leave, which is normal per their policy. He also said state attorney's office is going to be investigating as well, which is also uh, normal in these types of situations. And the sheriff said that they will try to get to the bottom of what happened, figure out why it happened in the first place. For local coverage, you can count on. I'm Ben Ryan, Action News Jax. Team coverage continues with Action News Jax, Nick Gibson. And Nick, you actually spoke to a young man who says he heard the shooting. Yeah, I had the opportunity to speak with a young man who didn't want to be identified on camera. He tells me uh, whenever this uh, shooting initially happened, he said he heard at least 60 gunshots. He also tells me that he heard a couple of JSO officers come over the intercom asking the suspect uh, to essentially uh, get out of his car as quickly as possible. And of course, I believe we have some sound when I interviewed that young man uh, just moments after all of this happened. Police saying hands, 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 and I heard one of them say he had shot me in the face, and then I heard a whole bunch of rambling, and then I heard negotiators saying, "Saying come outside, you'll be, you'll be with medical assistance, you you won't be shot, you'll be safe," and that's all I heard. Now, that young man, he also tells me, I asked him just a simple question. I said, uh, the suspect, because he said that the suspect potentially lived around him, maybe behind him or beside him. I asked him, Have, has he ever seen that suspect before? And he says, yes, but he didn't really think anything of it. And he also told me that he didn't think uh, that he was involved in this situation. So, of course, still a lot of moving parts inside of this investigation. And as we learn more, we will bring it to you on air and also online. For local coverage, you can count on reporting from Jacksonville. Nick Gibson, Action News Checks. The second officer involved shooting so far this year in Jacksonville. The first was last night on Main Street at Drury Lane. JSO says in that case, an officer shot a drug suspect who they said had a knife and was moving toward officers. New at 11, the Jacksonville Zoo is planning security and safety changes following a bear attack on a zookeeper. 
Action News Jax first told you last month when an American black bear was able to get outside its exhibit and attack that zookeeper. That person was hurt but survived. The bear was killed by the zoo's response team. Now the zoo says a shift door used to securely isolate animals was left open, allowing the bear to get to the zookeeper. The zoo plans to install two lock, two key systems on the bear exhibit. We already use these kinds of systems on the tiger and lion enclosures. The two key system requires two people, so there's a built in double check. The teen accused of killing 13 year old Tristan Bailey will face a jury of six people when he goes on trial for murder next month. A judge made that ruling in St. Augustine in a courtroom there today. Aiden Fucci is accused of stabbing Tristan Bailey more than 100 times in the Durban Crossing neighborhood on Mother's Day in 2021. Florida law calls for a 12 person jury in capital murder cases, but it also specifies a six person jury for cases when the death penalty is not an option like Fucci's case. It's easier to convince six people of a thing than it is 12. So it makes it a little bit easier for the state attorney to successfully prosecute and for the jury to convict. The judge also ruled no other knives found in the Fuji home can be used as evidence. Tonight, a man wanted in Clay County was captured by deputies working with the U.S. Marshal Service. The sheriff's office shared these pictures of Michael Dine. He was found in Orange Park with a gun and three knives. He was arrested for carrying a concealed weapon and a probation violation. His original charges were making explosives and weapons charges. JSO says that they've located all parties involved in a suspicious incident in Cedar Hills. On Action News Jax at 6, we brought you the breaking news that JSO was looking for a white van. JSO says a woman saw a man get out of a van and force a teen girl into the van sometime around 6.15 this morning. But again, JSO says they have found everyone involved, everyone is safe, but they are still investigating. Action News Jack's working to learn more about a school bus crash. Take a look at some video we got from a viewer 95 in the south side. You can see the front of a car under a bus. It's unclear if any students were on board at the time or if anyone was hurt. We will update you once we get more information. Immigration advocates are calling for the closure of the Baker County Detention Center. They held a protest today at the federal courthouse in Jacksonville demanding the end of the contract for holding undocumented people for ICE. They say more than 140 complaints and two lawsuits have been filed against the Baker County facility. The complaints range from voyeurism, excessive use of solitary confinement, and lack of access to medical care and lawyers. Similar complaints led to the closure of a similar facility in Glades County. All of the clients we've had up at Baker are moms and dads. So these are adults who have U.S. citizen children here in the United States, have established their lives here, um, and they're our neighbors. We reached out to both ICE and the Baker County Sheriff's Office about these complaints, and we're waiting to hear back. Do I've waited for this the whole entire, the whole time we've been in existence. Go Jags! Well, that's one way to say it. A live look at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City where the Jags will take on the Chiefs in the divisional playoff game tomorrow. Action News Jax was there as the Jags arrived in Kansas City. Sweet music, right? Oh, I enjoyed Loved it. it. The Action Sports Jax team has you covered. Brett and Dan spent the evening with some very excited Jags fans in KC. What a fun ride this has been here in the month of January, and it just keeps getting more and more fun as the game, of course, takes place on Saturday afternoon in Kansas City. And on Friday night, it's filled with Jags fans here at Johnny's Tavern. It's just been incredible how Jacksonville has fallen in love with this football team, and people are having the time of their lives right now. Been waiting for it for a long time, and it's been great to see it. It's one that's going to last for a long time with Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson. So the excitement has been out standing and these fans have been so pumped up and so ready to go and so excited about taking out the Kansas City Chiefs. We talked to a bunch of them throughout. Do ball till we die, okay? We're going to win tomorrow. We have lived for this 2017 18 season. Of course the game's decided on the field and that's where we're going to see Trevor Lawrence and Patrick Mahomes, two of the very best 
quarterbacks in the NFL. That's right. I just said that about Trevor. <laughs> Absolutely. And two of the better coaches, guys that have Lombardi trophies. This should be a good football game on Saturday afternoon. Jags are underdogs, and I love this stat. They've won eight times this season when they are the underdog. That is tied for the most in the Super Bowl era. Can they do it one more time? For Dan Hicken, I'm Brent Fortno. Action Sports Jacks on the road in Kansas City. Jags and Chiefs in the divisional playoff round for Action Sports Jacks. All right, lots of folks making the trip. Action News Jacks spotted Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry and his family as the Jags arrived at the team hotel. Now, Mayor Curry and Kansas City's mayor are betting on the outcome of the big game. Take a listen. All right, Mayor Curry, challenge is accepted. We know the Chiefs are going to win, but regardless, I mean, if we don't, we've got this great mix plate from LC's, one of Kansas City's best restaurants. Exceptional food, get some beans, get some sauce, some great juice. I'll tell you more than anything, though, happy to support Kansas City business. And let's go Chiefs. Go Chiefs. All right, that's Kansas City Mayor Quinton Lucas serving up some barbecue in the bet. Meantime, Action News Jacks first told you Curry's betting vodka from Manifest Spirits, beer from Wicked Barley Brewing, and donuts from Mini Bar. A big question a lot of folks have is uh, the weather, a concern right. for fans who made the trip and also for the team so yeah. what are we thinking weather could have a pretty major impact today again there's a storm system moving into the midwest so kansas city will be chilly now that's not to be unexpected yeah. this time of year of course but also some rain sleet and snow developing particularly in the second half it would appear so that could very well have a an impact on the game and this system also impacts our weather right here at home with some rain this weekend i'll time it out for you in the first alert forecast Coming up, two stories you still haven't seen on Action News Jacks. First, state lawmakers propose a major expansion of school vouchers. Why critics call it an attack on public education. Then, pushback after the DeSantis administration says no to an advanced placement class in African American studies. What the NAACP and the White House are saying tonight. More local stories straight ahead on Action News Jacks. Start your morning right. Start your morning ride. A new day, a new traffic headache. But Action News Jack's traffic expert, Maritza Ross, is here to guide all kinds of daily drivers, like the traffic dodgers. Don't worry, I'm going to get you around this mess on I-95. The side street seekers. Now you can exit early on 17. Due the last minute leavers. If you're getting a late start this morning, here are your fastest routes. So let Maritza save you time on Action News Jack's This Morning. Start your morning ride. Arlington Toyota wants to know what drives you. Great service, getting more with your purchase, then prepare for the drive of a lifetime when you buy from Arlington Toyota. Arlington has over 500 Toyotas available with inventory arriving daily. You'll also get a lifetime warranty plus 30 days to love your new purchase or exchange it. So come to Arlington's state-of-the-art showroom where you'll discover what drives you is what we do. Shop ArlingtonToyota.com today. Family owned and operated for over 43 years. Last year year more clients hired Morgan & Morgan than ever before. With over 2 million phone calls last year alone, more people in more cities across America want more Morgan & Morgan. When you hire Morgan & Morgan, you're also hiring a family business. And after 35 years, we now have more offices, more staff, and more lawyers than any other injury firm in the world. Protecting America. Fighting for you. Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan. For the people. David & Associates is the single source for all your dental needs, and all under one roof. From fillings to cosmetic makeovers, complex implants to full mouth rehabilitation. Stop driving, start saving, David & Associates. At Take 5, you stay in your car because we're faster than you think. Oil change is done. That was so fast I didn't even have time to finish knitting these sweaters. Oh well. Cheese! Take 5, the stay in your car 10 minute oil change. Jurassic World Live Tour. The feeling is real. Experience it live. Jurassic World Live Tour. Check out the pre-show experience to take photos with life-size Jurassic World dinosaurs included with your ticket. Coming to Buy Star Veterans Memorial Arena. There's nothing more unforgettable than the gift of a beautiful smile. David & Associates has been giving our patients a reason to smile by providing affordable orthodontic care. Give a gift that will last a lifetime. Schedule an appointment with David & Associates today. The Action News Jack's first alert seven-day forecast. On air, online, and on the go is brought to you by Vistar. Introducing new, even higher CD rates at Vistar Credit Union. Right now, earn up to 4.5% APY for 23 months. 
The San Marco Lion. The Lions, no relation to the Detroit Lions, sporting teal to show their support for the team. By the way, the choir you're hearing, we heard that earlier. That's thanks to the Riverside Presbyterian Church of Jacksonville. They love their Duval. Florida lawmakers are considering an expansion of the school choice program. It's to let parents use public funding to send kids to any kind of school. Actually, Jack first told you Thursday, the proposal would let any student in Florida get a scholarship to a private or charter school. Public education advocates, however, say it's an attack on public schools. And this financial impact that this could have on school districts is potentially huge. Uh, we just don't know at this point, and we haven't seen the fiscal impact. In the 2021 school year, more than 188,000 students in Florida received this kind of scholarship. More fallout linked to Florida's Stop Woke law. The NAACP of Florida condemned Governor DeSantis over the decision to ban advanced placement curriculum for African-American studies in Florida high schools. We told you last night the State Education Department rejected the College Board's proposal for an advanced placement class in African-American studies. The Florida Education Department says the lesson plans include inaccuracies and don't comply with the Stop Woke law. The White House says that this kind of action by Florida is not new. Florida currently bans teachers uh, from, take, from talking about who they are and who they love. As we've talked about many times here in this briefing room, they have banned more books in schools and libraries than almost every other state uh, in the country. And the White House stressed the federal government does not dictate school curriculum. Vice President Kamala Harris will head to Tallahassee on Sunday to give a speech marking 50 years since the Roe v. Wade Supreme Court decision. Today, anti-abortion activists held the first March for Life march since the Supreme Court decision that overturned Roe v. Wade last year. This time, the route changed to pass by the Capitol building. It was made to show that the fight to block access to abortion has now moved to Congress. Lane closure started tonight to fix a busted overpass beam in St. John's County. In early December, a dump truck driving on I-95 with his bed up hit that County Road 214 overpass. FDOT says they may have to close one lane between 8 and 5, 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. And they may close both lanes between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. There may also be overnight detours on Friday and Saturday nights from now through February 5th. The new lounge at the Florida Theater is now open. Here's a first look at the Remini Lounge. The lounge celebrates the 100-year history of the Florida Theater. It also has specialty cocktails and private restrooms. The lounge is for ensemble members of the Florida Theater. The cost starts at 21 bucks a month. In Atlantic Beach, the police department is saying thank you to a local couple. The Buildmans paid for this car wrap for one of the patrol cars. Take a look. It helps the department with recruiting and outreach. Now, it's the chief, Jacksonville's most accurate chief meteorologist, Mike Burrish. Lots of ups and downs when it comes to temperatures over the next, uh, well, four, five, six, seven days, really. Not uncommon for January during the middle of the winter. We only top out in the low 60s tomorrow, much cooler than today and much cooler than yesterday's record high of 84. Back up to near 80 Sunday, only to drop again Monday. Back up Tuesday and Wednesday before we see falling temperatures again later next week, as I'll show you in the first alert seven-day forecast. It is dry now on Five Sweep First Alert Doppler HD, but at this time tomorrow night, there should be quite a bit of rain spreading across the area, even a few rumbles of thunder, a bit of green here is just simply false echoes. Moisture in the atmosphere uh, may likely will result in some areas of fog. So here we go across Duval County and Metro Jacksonville. Tomorrow's temperatures only in the low 60s in the afternoon, starting out in the 40s. If we're to see much sun tomorrow, it's earlier in the day. The later we get, the thicker and the more cloud cover we get. Brunswick to Jekyll Island to Hannah Park to Volano Beach to St. Augustine, staying in the 50s. A little drizzle at times, and by late afternoon into the evening, the first few showers start to develop. Waycross to Kingsland Lake City to Fort White and Lottie. We'll see temperatures reaching the mid 60s tomorrow afternoon and wind off the ocean out of the east at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it's a dry start tomorrow morning. It's just that we'll have areas of fog and the thickening clouds that will uh, take over through the day. So that's putting keeping a lid on the temperatures. This is brand new data just coming in now, updated, and it, it has increased the rain a little bit faster up to I-10. So here's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. At this point, it's late in the first quarter of the Jags game. So for watch parties, there already may be some rain near Daly's, but especially south, Clay, Putnam, St. John's County, Bradford, Union County, Columbia County. And then that continues to spread east and northeastward through 9 o'clock tomorrow evening. 
all the way through midnight and in fact on and off waves and bands of showers and thunderstorms tomorrow night, some of which will likely be pretty heavy. But by 8 o'clock Sunday morning, shortly after sunrise, you can see all the colors push north. The heavy rain and the storms have pushed north with the warm front. We catch a break for Jacksonville and northeastern Florida for a good part of the day Sunday and temperatures soar. It'll be windy and will be near 80 degrees only to see yet another band of showers and thunderstorms approaching from the west by late afternoon and into the early evening hours. That's with the cold front and uh, may result in a few strong storms. We'll keep you updated, of course, throughout the day Sunday. Rainfall forecasts vary a great deal. Don't get too caught up in exact amounts for exact locations. The point is that there'll be some heavy downpours with rainfall amounts averaging a half inch to an inch and a half, but locally two inches plus in our storms tomorrow night and into the day Sunday and Sunday evening. So for the Jags watch party, a lot of cloud cover and that increasing shot at some rain and temperatures quite cool. So rain gear and jackets and coats, weekends always in view. In the first alert seven-day forecast, there's the warm-up for Sunday, the drop on Monday, but at least with a good deal of sunshine. Another warm-up midweek ahead of the next storm system that brings yet more rain late Wednesday and Wednesday night before clearing out but cooling off late next week. ActionNewsJax.com. You can download for free the First Alert weather app. And first thing in the morning, Trevor Gibbs with your First Alert forecast. Celebrating Arbor Day a few months early, we'll explain why not every city marks the tree holiday at the same time. And a St. John's County Sheriff's Department team member who helped make state history is retiring. We'll tell you who. Go ahead. Dan Hick and Brett Martino, if the Jags play like their fans, oh, <laughs> chalk up the W as we get ready to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, they might exert too much energy if they're playing <laughs> like their fans, but hopefully they have enough energy to beat the Chiefs. We talk all about this huge football game and how the Jags can win. Coming up. While most stations just cover the news, we uncover. Because Emily Turner has 16 years of experience as an investigative reporter. That's why Action News Jax is local coverage you can count on. D5 Implant Centers offer true permanent all zirconia implant supported teeth in seven days, not temporaries you wear for months like many centers offer. I got the D5 procedure done and got my final permanent teeth in one week. Call D5 Implant Centers today. My auto accident, I was at a stop sign and I was rear ended contacting Harold and Harold. I got an instant call back about what the process was going to be. When I interviewed with Holt, he is so down to earth. It was more about care and concern of how I was feeling as a person. That just gives me ease. It's just not the billboard. He really is a genuine, sincere person. Harold and Harold, don't settle for less than you deserve. I screwed up. Mm -hmm. I got us T-Mobile home internet. <sighs> You can almost feel the drag when people walk by with their phones. Oh, I can't hear you. You're frozen. Ladies, please. You put it on airplane mode when you pass our house. I was trying to work. We're working it, too. Yeah, working it, girl. I want to hear you say it out loud. Well, I could switch us to Xfinity. Those smiles. That's why I do what I do. Get Xfinity Internet for $20 a month for 12 months with no annual contract and a 12-month price lock. Switch today. Looking for a new home to rent in Jacksonville? JWBRentalHomes.com is the place to start. With over 16 years of renting homes, plus a huge selection of inventory for rent in all price ranges, JWB Rental Homes has the perfect place for you. We make it easy and affordable to rent a home. Brand new construction options. Ask how to lock in your monthly rent. Even schedule your own same-day showing with a code sent to your phone. See what the best property management team in Jacksonville has to offer at JWBRentalHomes.com. The First Coast Y is a proud partner of Action News Jack's Family Focus. When you've been hurt, we stand up. We stand up for you. We stand up for your family. We stand up with strength. And we fight for your rights. We stand between you and those who would hurt you again. With confidence and determination, we stand up for what's right, no matter what. We don't back down. Farah and Farah, here for you, here for good. My smile had taken so much from my life, I just didn't want to wait anymore. Most practices take six or seven months with many visits for just temporary teeth. I got the all zirconia D5 procedure done, and I had my final permanent teeth in one week. All right, don't forget about tomorrow night's official Jaguars Chiefs viewing party at 
Daly's Place. Doors open at 3.30 p.m. The viewing starts at 4 30. So remember, it's go Jags all weekend long. And the town of Orange Park even celebrated today. They celebrated Arbor Day. City leaders helped to plant trees at Rob Bradley Conservation Park at Nelson Point. Arbor Day is April 28th in most of Florida. Some cities do decide on their own dates to make sure that the day falls on a day that's ideal for newly planted tree survival. Park rangers in Australia have discovered a monster toad. Toadzilla weighs 2.7 kilograms. That's just under six pounds. We did the number. He was found in Conway National Park in Queensland on Australia's northeast coast. Toadzilla may be the largest cane toad ever found, believe it or not. Now they're poisonous, invasive species, so the toad was euthanized and then taken to a museum. Now, it's the best local sports show in Jacksonville. This is Action Sports Jacks, powered by Safe Touch Security. What a scene we had here in Kansas City on a Friday night at Johnny's Tavern as basically all the Jacks fans have flooded this area, and you'll see them on TV on Saturday afternoon. I think that teal is going to pop against the red of the Chiefs. Brett Martineau along with Dan Hicken covering this divisional playoff round game. Jags are heavy underdogs, Dan. A lot has to go right, but they think they have the football team to get it to go right. Well, they do, and they have a great quarterback. And tomorrow is the young prince's turn, right? He's the young prince against the king. <laughs> and Trevor Lawrence's play will dictate how the Jags do. Listen, we can't see bad Trevor like we did against the Chargers a week ago in the first half. But the second half, Trevor was unbelievable. I think he's going to take off, keep building out what he was able to do. Listen, we all know what he did in his second year. The second half of his second year was terrific, and he's going to have to be really special because the Jags, Brent, let's be honest, they got to score a lot of points to win. They have to keep up with the other guy, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, and the Chiefs offense, which, by the way, is the number one offense in the NFL, even though they lost Tyree Kill. So this is all about Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and this receiving core. you got to check the run game. We'll get to that in a moment. But the Jags have to contain, and maybe just make a few plays against Mahomes. You're not going to stop him, but you got to make a few plays. As for that run game, they got to stop the run. They did the last meeting against the Chiefs, and then Travis Etienne probably has to be big, Dan. Yeah, let's talk about Travis Etienne for a second, because he's sort of the, well, he's kind of the wild card in this situation. They played the Chiefs earlier this year. He only got 11 carries. I think he's got to get more than that if they're going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, because one of the things that we've talked about a lot this week was that one drive the Jags had, that one killer drive that takes up seven, eight, nine minutes. They've done that a lot this year. And if they can do that and keep the ball out of Mahomes' hand, it's a double-edged sword, and it will pay off big time for the Jaguars. So ETN, heavy dose. And the Chiefs know they've talked all week about stopping him and making Trevor have to beat him through the air. Which Travis is more important to their quarterback? Travis Kelsey to Mahomes, Travis ETN Ooh. to Lawrence. Ooh. I would say ETN, by the way, if you were going to ask me. Kelsey's awesome, and I know he's going to be awesome. I know he's going to post numbers, and he doesn't mess up. And those two have a great great chemistry between them. So uh, uh, Kelsey's terrific, but I think if ETN can get over 100 yards, I think the Jags have a, a shot at beating the Chiefs. It was an awesome scene in Jacksonville on Friday morning when the fans sent the team off. It's an awesome scene in Kansas City as the Jags fans have arrived. Now hopefully we get an awesome game, Jags and Chiefs, on Saturday afternoon. For Dan Hicken, I'm Brett Martin, Action Sports Jacks. And the Action Sports Jacks team is bringing you coverage more than anyone else on Saturday. Join us for Jags Weekend at 12.30 on the radio, ESPN 690 from noon to 2.30. And then we're going to bring you our post-game show on Facebook at ESPN 690 at 7.30. We're back on TV for Action Sports Jags Primetime at 10.30 on Fox 30 and 11.30 on CBS 47. Action News Jax at 11 is brought to you in part by Farah and Farah. Here for you, here for good. At Farah and Farah, we do big things. We fight for injured workers. We fight for victims of truck accidents, for the abandoned and the cheated. We don't shy away from the tough fights, and we've proven time and time again that we can win the big cases for our clients. In fact, we've won billions and counting. If you've been injured, call us. Fair and Farah, our results are no accident. When his chest pain started, I knew it wasn't old age. This was something wrong. 
They went in through my shoulder. They fished themselves down to my heart. What they did, they did correctly, apparently, and it worked properly. I went in the hospital Monday morning. I was having lunch Tuesday with my wife at home. I've got a strong, healthy 86-year-old husband back. We are eternally grateful to Ascension St. Vincent's.